Hello everyone. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A <laughs> and I have a special guest. It's Edward Phillip. Yes. You want to say hello, baby? You want to say hello, my love? Hello, my love. Look, no, no, I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> so safe to say Edward wasn't having any of that, but he's sitting down next to me. Uh, and I also wanted to take the time to thank you guys so much for those of you that watched um, the video from uh, my hubby and I. We had such a great time doing that video and we were reading through all the comments. I mean, they were so, so sweet. So thank you guys. Uh, and we're really happy that you guys enjoyed it. All right. So without further ado, before I jump right into Minx Monday, I have to share one more thing. And that is the bag that I'm currently using. And that is the Chanel O case in the medium size with the black caviar leather and the matte gold hardware. Uh, I switched over to this a few days ago and I have to say it's really, really comfortable. So I'm excited to use it a little bit more so I can give you guys a uh, thorough review on it. All right, so let's get started, shall we? Uh, from April Cannoli. When you travel overseas to purchase, do you think it would be better to ship your bags to you to you, like through UPS or whatever the carrier is over in Italy or Paris. I'm planning a trip for the beginning of 2017, and I know somebody asked about taking your purchases on the plane with you. But for me, I'm not quite sure I want to have all that on the plane with me. Not to say that anything would happen, but I would like to shop and buy what I wanted to buy at the beginning of my trip and then just ship it to myself. I know it's always a possibility, but what do you think? Um... I've actually, uh, I've heard, I've, I know quite a few people that have done that when they go overseas, they just ship it to themselves here in the States. Uh, and I've heard, uh, mixed, you know, mixed feelings on it. Some people say it's really easy to do and others say that it's a lengthy process. I don't really know. I personally have never researched it myself. Uh, just because I'm the type of person that I would rather have all my purchases with me. Uh, you know, with the exception of what happened last year where my <laughs> luggage was lost and I did have some items inside of my luggage. Uh, not all of them, thankfully. Uh, but I would, I know I would freak out. I would worry. I would just have... If I'm going to spend the, the money that I'm going to spend overseas, I just want to make sure that it's at least with me. You know what I mean? That's how I am anyways. Um, but again, I've heard people say that it's a great process. I've heard people say it's a lengthy process. Uh, so I think... Um there are a few uh, threads on the forum on this particular subject, and I would just uh, say that to maybe research it a little bit more until you go uh, on your trip. That way you know what's best for you. Maybe uh, maybe carrying the, the purchases with you may be the best option for you, or maybe just shipping it to yourself, like is, you know something that you had been contemplating already might be the best uh, thing for you anyways. Uh, but no, I wish I could be more help, uh, but it's I, again, I've heard mixed reviews on it, so I, I really wouldn't know what to, what to tell you, um, except for I, I, I would never do it. I know I would seriously freak out. Like, did it get, did it get home? Did this happen? I would just, it would drive me insane is what it would, what would happen. Uh, you know, and if it's anything like, I always think, what if they lose my package? You know what I'm saying? Like they lost my luggage. Thankfully I got that back. But what if they lost my package? What if something happened? What if I didn't fill it out correctly? I would, no way. It would drive me nuts. <laughs> but for those of you that have traveled overseas and you ship it back to yourselves, um, let us know in the comment sec uh, section down below how it was and uh, if you have any tips for April. Uh, okay, so next question. Sherry, uh, Sherry Simon, I am dying for an Yves Saint Laurent chain wallet with the Metlasse leather. What do you think of it? Should I get it in black or colors such as light blue or light rose? Oh man, so we went to South Coast Plaza this past weekend and I went to St. Laurent. Oh, I love, love that store. I loved all the bags. <laughs> I fell in love with pretty much all of them. <laughs> uh, but, you know, as much as I like the light rose, I love the light rose, uh, even with the uh, silver hardware or the gold hardware. I just think it's a really nice combination. Uh, very fun. Very, very, um, I think it's very classy, to be honest. I'm not a big fan of blue, so I wouldn't be... Um, it wouldn't be fair to ask me because it's not a color that I would end up purchasing for a handbag. Uh, but personally, if it were me, I would always go with black. I just love black handbags and I know I want to try to incorporate more color into my collection, but I just like how easy it is to wear a black bag. And, uh, you know, I just, that's what I would do. But the light rose is gorgeous. It is stunning. So, uh, I would say either the light rose or the black. But again, I'm the wrong person to ask for light blue. <laughs> uh, okay, Jane Cook. Uh, here is a question. Pont Neuf or the Venus? I am siding with the Pont Neuf in more. Okay, so like I told you guys, we were there. And uh, I also went into the Louis Vuitton store to just kind of check some things out. And I obviously, I took back the, um, the clay that I talked about last week. And 
I, I was really intrigued by the Venus uh, before I went into the boutique because I saw it on the website and it looked like a bag that I would just absolutely love. It has the monogram canvas, it has leather, uh, and it just, it seemed like just a very, you know, a very structured bag and I loved that. So when, when, when we went into the boutique, I looked, I saw the Venus and I picked it up and the hand, even though it comes with a, a detachable sh uh, shoulder strap, the handles are very, very short and they're kind of uncomfortable. So when I'm carrying the, the, what's it called the, the bag, it kind of feels like a really heavy briefcase. And I just figured that over time, if I'm shopping, it might be a little annoying to carry, uh, to hand carry. So obviously that's why they have the detachable shoulder strap, but you guys know how I feel about that. Uh, and I, I don't know, it wasn't, it didn't feel, it actually felt it was extremely structured, maybe too structured, if that makes any sense. Um, but you know, who knows? Cause I'm crazy. I always tell you guys, I love structured bags, but that was just too, too much. Then I saw the Pont Neuf in person. Oh my goodness. I fell in love with that bag. It is stunning. I think that the Pont Neuf is going to give the, um, Montaigne in Empreinte a run for its money. It is just absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, so I'd have to side with you, the Pont Neuf, <laughs> the Venus. Uh, I'm not too, uh, I'm, yeah, I, I thought I would be like all for it, you know, and it has a really cool name, but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't impressed. Uh, okay. Uh, Bianca D do you think due to your experiences in store that you will be turning to buy Louis Vuitton online exclusively or does buying an LV piece in the store slash in person much more satisfying setting aside the instant gratification of it? <laughs> um, you know, probably not buying online exclusively just because of what literally just happened last week with the clay. Uh, you know, I'm not, I like the fact that when I'm in the boutique, I'm able to really inspect the piece that I'm, that I'm purchasing. Uh, you know, like I've told you guys before, some people might think that's a little, that's ridiculous. I don't care, but if I'm going to spend the money that I'm going to spend on these items, then I want it to look like perfect. Like I said last week. Uh, and you know, I feel that when it's online, you don't really get, you don't really get that option. You just get what you get and then you have to hope for the best. And then it's obvious, it is a lengthy process to return it or exchange it. Um, so there's always that, but I really do like going into boutiques. I love not only being able to pick out the item that I really want and look over it, but I just like the, the overall experience. I think it's really fun. And half the time we end up talking to great sales associates. Sometimes we don't have the best, um, you know, the best experience experiences with sales associates, but for the most part, it's just, it, it, I think it's a fun experience. I really do. And you know, I just, I love everything about it. Definitely. But, um, no, uh, I think, I think I'll, I'll end up doing the, uh, in store probably from now on if I do. Uh, okay. Victoria Bryant. So I have a confession. I have been cheating on LV, <laughs> laughing out loud. We've all been there, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> I have been looking at two Yves Saint Laurent wallets, um, the Zip wallet and the compact zip around, both from Yves Saint Laurent. Thoughts? I was actually looking at this wallet um, because I've always told you guys that I always want to try out a small leather good before I invest in a, in a larger bag just to see if I really like it so I can interact with the leather or the piece in general. Uh, and... I really like the zip around. Um, it retails for seven twenty five here in the States, if I'm not mistaken. And I just like how big it is. I like the fact that it's very secure. You have a lot of, uh, compartments for all of your, all of your items. I'm not too crazy about the compact. However, I do like the fact that it opens up and you're able to see your credit cards at a glance. So it's not like the zippy coin purse from Louis Vuitton. Um, and I think that's the, that's the idea that I had, you know, when I, when I first, um, heard about the, the item, but, uh, I really like how easy it is to open and the zip around of course is my favorite cause it's a full length wallet. And, um, I think for the, I think the zip around the compact one is 625 if I'm not mistaken. And the larger one is 725. So for a hundred dollars more, I get double the, double the, uh, the wallet. And that's what works for my lifestyle. But I think they're both great, but personally, the larger one is my favorite. Uh, okay. Uh, poetic love stone. Do you know if Louis Vuitton would allow you to order from another country? Example, someone in the U S ordering from Europe. Um, uh, I remember I, a, a long time ago, I asked if I can do that. And one of the sales associates or actually I called the one eight, eight number. And they said that I couldn't do that because of the currency exchange. And it's a little bit tougher. However, there are some 
awesome sales associates that will end up getting the item for you from um, from Italy, from Spain, wherever it is overseas, and then they'll have it shipped to the store and then you can buy it uh, at the boutique. So that was pretty awesome. I've also, uh, one of my clients, I mean, she has an amazing, amazing Louis Vuitton collection, plus her Chanel collection is just jaw dropping. And uh, she's been able to call up her sales associate and they actually ship it to her house. Not necessarily the boutique that asks for the item, but overseas will ship it to her house. So I don't know. Um, obviously she spends quite a bit of money there. Uh, but, uh, I, I know that it is a possibility, but I've asked about it a long time ago and they were just like, no, no, no. So I don't know if it's, um, if it just depends on your sales associate, or maybe it just depends on the relationship uh, that you have with your sales associate, but I don't know, but it is definitely possible. Uh, okay, Becky Ralston, my hubby and I are planning a vacation to a tropical place. I'm so excited and I can't wait. How fun! I was wondering what you recommend. On our trip, I plan on going compact and being hands-free. I currently own the Favorite MM, the Neverfull GM with a pouch, Alma PM Dem and Demi and the Alma PM Damier Ben print. I was thinking about the pochette, the pochette accessoire NM. Also, do you know if the favor MM crossbody will fit on the pochette NM? I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared to ruin my goods. Would you bring your LV items to this environment? Yes. Uh, and uh, the strap on the favorite would fit on the, um, on the pochette accessoire. And truth be told, when we went to the Bahamas, uh, I remember that I went into Louis Vuitton and I purchased my first pochette accessoire NM in the monogram, uh, in the monogram print. And I used that bag. It was really, really awesome to use. I love the fact that it's not fussy. It doesn't, you don't have to worry about any plates like you do, uh, with the Eva clutch, if you know, or you don't have to worry about any type of flaps. It's just such a, it is such a, a small compact bag that is not fussy. And that's exactly what you want. At least in my opinion, when I'm, you know, when I'm traveling or something like that, I don't want something that's going to be too cumbersome. And, um, uh, we actually got caught in a, a huge, a huge, uh, storm, uh, while we were there. And I had my, my, my brand new, uh, Pusha accessoire and I mean, the rain just totally covered it up. Then we went, I mean, I was, I was freaking out because I thought something was going to happen to the vaquetta. I'm like, oh no, water stains, water stains. You know, I was just freaking out. And then, uh, we went, we went back to our room and I just laid it flat and I put a towel over it. And I am not kidding you, not a single solitary water stain showed up on that. But you know what they say with vaquetta, usually it takes some time when, once the patina process starts to starts to occur, then you'll start to see the water stains. But regardless, I never had that happen. Even years after the Bahamas, I never saw a single uh, water stain, but I just thought I'd throw that in there just in case, uh, because obviously tropical locations sometimes have, um, you know, sporadic, uh, rain showers, um, or showers. But, um, yes, I would definitely, definitely recommend the Pouchette, uh, NM. It is a great, great item. And, uh, I know I loved all three of mine when I had them. And, uh, I think you will be happy with that one. I, I, like I said, the cumbersome or the bigger bags aren't really, um, uh, uh, I'm not too keen on those when I'm traveling. Uh, okay. Uh, CV underscore love in choosing my next handbag. Would you go for the artsy MM in monogram, the speedy bandolier 30 in emprunt noir or the artsy MM in emprunt noir? I know it's a different range of bags in terms of price, but I have had the hardest time deciding between these bags. Oh man. <laughs> um, okay. As much as I love the artsy in the emprunt leather, I personally think it's way too heavy way too heavy for me. Anyways, I know that my shoulder would end up just giving up. <laughs> uh, but I think, I think the bag is absolutely stunning in emprunt. Um, as far as the monogram between the monogram and the speedy bandolier emprunt. Oh man, that is a tough, tough call. Cause I like both of them. I love both of them. Um, Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> the bandolier, I mean, has a little bit more space in the emprunt because of the dual zippers and it's just gorgeous. Over time, it'll start to slouch maybe a little bit and the embossing won't be as deep as it is when you first get it. And what happens with the artsy is that it's the uh, north south type of bag. So it's very, very tall and it's actually has a fat bottom. Uh, so it might, I don't know if, you know, you, your things might, 
I'm not saying they'll get lost, but like I've told you guys about it before, it's a big, big bag. And sometimes you have to kind of, um, I don't want to say rummage, but you have to go, you know, really look through your items in order to get to them. Uh, but I really like the simplicity of the, um, of the Emprunt Speedy Bandolier 30. I think it's gorgeous. I love the leather and, uh, I mean, again, as much as I love the Artsy MM and Monogram, I think it's a great bag. It's one of my favorite bags. I th There's just something about the Speedy Bandolier on prompt that I cannot turn away. <laughs> I've said it for as long as I can remember. It is just a beautiful bag. Um, and it might be a little bit more comfortable because you have a little bit more versatility. So maybe the, maybe, let's say maybe the artsy does get, tend to get a little heavier. At least you have the option with the speedy bandolier to take off the strap and use it as a classic speedy or to put on the strap and put it and use it crossbody or on your shoulder. So it has a lot more versatility and you guys know how I talk about versatility. So I'd have to say the speedy bandolier 30, even though I do love, even though I do love my monogram, my monogram artsy, it's, it's pretty bag. It's a beautiful bag, but I don't know. That speedy bandolier on prize. Gorgeous. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, dork <laughs> in my opinion, <clears throat> I feel as though the, uh, the concerns regarding Louis Vuitton's quality uh, correlate with Nicholas Gisquier taking over as head designer. I have to be honest, I'm not a fan of many of the recent designs under his direction. I absolutely adored Marc Jacobs and what he did for the company. Thoughts? I agree 100%. I loved, absolutely loved what Marc Jacobs brought to the table for Louis Vuitton. Um, you know, and I feel that with the new collections, with everything that Nicolas Gisquier is coming out, in my opinion, of course, I just feel like it's, it's, it's too edgy for my liking, but maybe it's because I'm stuck with, you know, I like the whole classic look of, of Louis Vuitton. You know what I mean? And obviously, um, his creative design is very innovative and, uh, you know, you have to compete with a lot of other brands out there. So you have to make your, your brand that much more relevant. You can't, I guess some people might think that, um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to play devil, uh, devil's advocate right now. Cause like I said, I think you have to be a little bit innovative to be able to stay in the game, to make your, your items, you know, what people, what the people want. But in this particular case, when it comes to Louis Vuitton, I feel that classic is just perfect in my opinion. You know, when you have been around for a very long time, I feel that you're, you've been in, you've been in the game for so long for a certain reason, because you know what you're doing. You know what I mean? And, uh, I think that if Nicholas Gisquier started his own line, uh, and he kind of, um, he brought those designs to the table, I think that would be fine because it's a new brand, it's a new label. And it's something that's kind of just really very, very creative, very, very innovative, very, very artistic, uh, without having to necessarily meddle with the, with such a classic, a cl I mean, such an amazing fashion house, you know what I mean? Uh, and obviously Louis Vuitton has had the same type of style, same, same type of classic designs for over a hundred years. And that's, to me, that's what makes them special. That's what really makes them stand out because you get all these other brands, you get all these new designers that come and they go, or they have their, you know, their five, uh, they have their one, you know, their one bag. That's the it bag for that season. And then it kind of starts to die out. Does that make sense? And then when, you have someone like Louis Vuitton, you just expect it to just be this amazing, amazing fashion house that never disappoints. I don't know if that's just me. I don't know if I, you know, if I'm crazy, uh, in thinking that, but I, I agree 100%. Um, I feel like Marc Jacob really respected the, the label and really respected the fashion house. And I feel that, I feel that he really listened to what what it is that we all wanted as consumers. You know, I feel like this, um, uh, the Nicholas maybe is just doing the innovative thing, doing the artistic thing and just running with it without really thinking of how it's, you know, how it's affecting the company. But obviously it's not affecting them in the least because they're still very, very successful. Even though, um, I read somewhere that, um, their sales have gone down quite a bit with the new design. So I don't know. I mean, to me, if that was me, I'd be like, okay, if we're losing sales, obviously it's because this isn't working out. And I have to mention, I have to mention it. I am sorry, but there is, uh, the, after the new runway show that the inverted colors of the monogram. So now instead of the monogram being the dark and then the LVs being that, uh, that caramel color, it's the opposite. And it, to me, it looks like MCM. Definitely. 
100%. That's what it reminds me of. And I was just kind of like blown away that they, it, I mean, <laughs> they know what it's like to have that, you know, that whole copyright thing or to have another fashion house kind of take over the, the, the look of their, of their items. And when I saw that, I was just like blown away. I, I was a little intrigued in the beginning and then it just hit me that it looked like a different designer. And yeah, <laughs> I wasn't too excited about that. I just have to say, I'm sorry. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I know a lot of you guys will disagree with me, but you know, that's just how I feel. Uh, okay. Uh, and Brandy loves beauty. How long does something have to sit on the shelf for you to realize you should sell it? This is a great, great question. Um, I would normally say six months, six months, maybe a year, but I think six months might be a little too short of a time because of the, maybe seasons changing. Um, you know, so obviously if you buy it in January, you won't be able to use it until, I don't know, maybe November or August or something like that. So they're, you know, that's past the six month mark. So I'd have to say nine months, nine months is a nice, perfect number that I usually tend to go for. Uh, I, I think a year is too long for something to sit there. And I think six months is too short. Like I just explained to you guys. So I think, uh, nine months is smack in the middle. And, um, I really rely on pictures on either Instagram or pictures on my phone. If, uh, if I'm really crazy about something, I tend to take pictures of it like crazy. Uh, and I'll talk about it quite a bit or I'll do reviews that I'm just like obsessed with that item. And I'll talk about it in my February favorite, or I'm sorry, my favorites videos. And, uh, when I don't see any pictures of the item for a long time, then I know that it's not something for me. And I have to say that I've been very, very fortunate with all of the items that I have sold that I haven't had that, you know, that kind of that seller's remorse. Oh, I shouldn't have gotten rid of it. I, you know, once I kind of put it in my mind that I'm going to get rid of it. I kind of just block it out and I don't really give it much thought. And the fact that I've never had to think about it twice, uh, really makes me believe that I made the right choice. Even though a lot of the items that I have sold are absolutely beautiful and I have, I fell in love with them in the beginning, but, uh, to have them just sit there and not be used, it just doesn't make sense to me, especially when I could put that money towards something else. So I would have to say, uh, nine months is the perfect amount of time to give it for, uh, for the seasons changing. Not only that, you're able to rotate your bags, uh, within that time. And if in that time that item or that piece doesn't, uh, make it into the rotation, then maybe I think it's time to, uh, for it to go to a better home. <laughs> uh, okay. And last, last question, Brenda A, what do you think of the medium red caviar Chevron with silver hardware flap? O M G. Yes, I said it. Okay. So, oh my goodness, this bag came out for Chanel. It's the act two. Um, it is this stunning, stunning red caviar Chevron classic flap. It comes in the medium, uh, medium large, and it also comes in the jumbo. Um, and it has silver hardware. This bag is absolutely jaw dropping. I had the opportunity. I had the opportunity to buy the jumbo and I just, I, I could not do it as much as, as much as I wanted to. I couldn't do it. I just kept thinking I have to save. I have to save. Um, you know, and this bag is just gorgeous, gorgeous. And I'm super excited because when I was talking to my sales associate, uh, he said that, uh, he's all, it's just a rumor, but I, I thought I'd tell you anyways. So I'm telling you guys. <laughs> so yes, it is a, uh, it is definitely a rumor. Will it come to fruition? I have no idea, but they're saying that the boy bags for the winter fall collection are going to be all in caviar leather, which is exactly what I've been waiting for. <laughs> so I was excited about that. But to answer your question that, that, oh my goodness, that flap was just I can't even put into words. I, oh my goodness. I even showed it to my hubby. He's like, that's, that's a really nice bag. It's really nice. He's like, are you going to get it? I said, no, I have to be good. I have to be good. And the more I think about it and the more I talk about it now, I'm kind of like really many, seriously, I should have bought it. But whoever gets it, who I, whichever of you ended up buying it. Oh my goodness. Kudos to you. And congratulations. Cause that bag is gorgeous gorgeous. And I heard that, um, actually he told me that some boutiques didn't get it at all and other boutiques got one or two pieces only. And after that, that was it. So, <sighs> 
gorgeous. If you guys can check it out because it is beautiful. All right. So that does it for Minx Monday q and I know I cut it a little short, um, but my throat is bothering me quite a bit. Uh, hopefully I'm not getting sick again, but thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for all of the wonderful questions. And I will see you all tomorrow with a um, luxury, a pre, a pre-loved luxury reveal. Pre-loved? Pre-loved. <laughs> Pre-loved haul, pre-loved pieces, whatever. Uh, but I will see you guys tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.